forget it, you know. So I am not official until I can make those meatballs. But anyway, off on another tangent. The spi I made these spicy meatballs, and I had this Barbera open, and I'm like, I don't care, it's not supposed to match, I want it, you know? And that's the other thing, at the end of the day, what do you want? Do what you want. In this case, it worked out well. Somehow, the acidity took away, again, the acid of the tomato sauce, and I tasted all of the veal and the beef and the meat flavor of the meatballs. And then the fruit was so big, it was actually, I think it was a Michele Chiarlo was the, was the one, or was it? Anyway, but it was super jammy. I mean, it was, there was so much fruit that it was almost like the fruit act as, act as perceived sweetness and offset the spiciness. And I just kept going back and forth. It was, it was an incredible match. So, questions, thoughts, anybody? No, you've all had enough wine. You're ready to go home and have a beer. <laughs> no, ready for more wine. Ready for more wine, I love it. Let me make sure I got everything across here that I wanted to get across. You're going to have the most amazing tasting after this. We're going to go outside. You're going to have an hour to pound through five red and five white pairings that Chef Bear has done. They're absolutely brilliant. Do you have a question back there? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not, not great at comparing. But my family only loves sweet Riesling. But my family loves you know, Rieslings because they're sweet. You know, They want the residual sugar. But in trying to open their palate up, are there, there are foods that can be a little bit sweeter or, or not sweeter that might be able to bring out a sweetness? Is there a pairing that might introduce them into more like drier style, you know, or you know, normal lines, if you will? Yeah. I totally hear what you're saying. It's like, you know, I say you ultimately you should have what you like, right? But when my mom keeps, you know, like big huge red wines in the fridge, you know, and drinks them on ice, I'm like, you know, sometimes what you like just doesn't work. You know, it's wrong, you know. So I know what you mean. It's like some people are just talk about certain wines. I mean, all I can say to that is, if you're saying they always like to have the sweeter wines, kind of no matter what they're eating, right? Well, yeah. If you expand their palate by saying, well, we try this food with this wine and get a different flavor. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the, the key is to present them with a match that works and they're going to love it. You know, it's a wine that they may not normally have considered, but when you match it properly, like for example, the Gruner Veldner with the artichokes, you know, all of a sudden, the, the, the undeniable flavor burst you get in your mouth, you're just going to love it, right? So I think it's about, and that's what's great about our jobs and our lives here, right? Your homework is to eat and drink constantly, because the more you do that, the more you see the matches and learn what works. So I feel like, you know, I want to give you the perfect answer, but I think the real answer is just keep trying food and wine pairings, make them brilliant when you get that, have them taste that. And of course, also pour the wine in the kitchen where they don't see it, so they don't have to know it's not recently until they already love it, you know? <laughs> So, anybody else? Yes, back here. You sitting there, we love your food last summer, watching you on the Food Network, and it's never been fantastic. Yeah. And you're the best food you've ever had. Yeah. Can you tell us about your experience being on the show? Yeah, you know, first of all, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I gotta tell you, looking into that little lens and not knowing who is out there is the weirdest feeling. And as I get to meet people on the street and people, I talk on my blog all the time with people, it's really rewarding. So thank you for changing my life, because now my job description is wake up, create a new recipe, eat, drink, start over again. You know, I love it. But as far as that experience goes, it was, like I say, nothing great in life happens until you're really uncomfortable. I was really uncomfortable. It was the hardest thing I have ever done because you go in there, and I was doing it because I wanted this to change my life. I wanted to get back into food because that's all I had done since I was 13 except for this little real estate stage. And so every moment was like, oh my God, I gotta make this work, I gotta make it happen. And it really was, like unscripted, it was crazy stuff. I mean, they would set you up. That one challenge we did out by the pool and the grills with the Red Lobster, I mean, they set you up. They make you think you're gonna have all these ingredients in your mind. You're going, I got it, I'm doing this, and I'm gonna do it with this, and oh, I got it, look out. And then they change the whole thing on you, take all your stuff away, you got five minutes finished, and you're like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, and those, those evaluations where you see us standing there like this, you know, I'm like, am I nine years old? Like, what am I doing? I'm like, yes, sir, you know? <laughs> I mean, you guys saw, like, the edited three minutes of that. The first night, we were there for nine hours, you know? It was like, oh my God, I'm gonna pass out. But I gotta tell you, the judges were so thoughtful and so real. You know, they would tear you apart. You'd be like, you're right. Okay, thank you. You know, so it was, it was a growing experience. You know, when you get pushed to your limits, you grow, and then you get to move on to the thing that you really love. So it was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Can you give me a few comments on matching red wines and chocolate? Red wines and chocolate. I think that's super interesting. The chocolate, again, if you get a milk chocolate or a lighter chocolate, it's not going to work because, again, you get so much of that fat 
to me, it really strips away the tan into the wine and you, and you lose the wine. Darker chocolates can be really interesting. If you get a darker chocolate, it, it has almost a bitterness to it as well, but it still has the cocoa butter, so it can balance the tannins. And I, and I like to have good fruit. Like to me, the second you say chocolate, I'm thinking Zinfandel. You know what I mean? I'm thinking Southern Rhone, you know, kind of Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre blends where you get some fruit, which is of course a natural with chocolate, right? But sometimes the tannins aren't as huge. So does that answer your question? Yeah, so, so lighter reds with good fruit, darker chocolates. One of my favorite all-time combinations, did I mention Sauternes Foie Gras? <laughs> yeah, okay, so we got that one covered. But another one, if you haven't tried it, is you gotta get some Oloroso Sherry and some Arcona almonds. Has anybody ever done that? Yeah, you guys are with me on that. It's like, it's insane. You take a sip of the sherry and you get that kind of slightly aged wood cask, almost as if the vanillin in the barrel just turned into nuts and the wine as it is. And then you eat one of these Marcona almonds and it's like almond butter. I mean, you're just, I'm just sitting there going, you gotta be kidding me. You know, this is when you have friends over, like your relatives that you wanna get to try something new. I have friends over who are like, yeah, I like wine and food pairings, you know, whatever. Okay, so where should we put the couch? But then they taste this and they, they stop in their tracks. They're like, oh my God, this is what you're talking about. I'm like, thank you. You know, so that's another brilliant pairing if you haven't tried that one.